Hi there, and welcome to the Rangers News YouTube channel. It's Jordan Carlyle here, joined by James Black. Hello. Uh, and there's been plenty of debate over the last couple of weeks since we've lost the skipper uh, to injury about who is going to play at right back in this team. And we've got three different players to choose from. So far, Jared has went for Patterson against Stranraer. Flanagan against St Mirren and a start against Hearts and then Polster off the bench against Hearts. Yep. And we're looking at a run of home games coming up after this, uh, which maybe factors in the debate, but who do you think is the man Rangers should have a right back going forward? For me just now it's Matt Polster. Um, for, I would have been Polster right away. Um, I'm, I've written before, I'm a, a big fan of Matt's. Um, but yeah, I think he was, he's the obvious choice. Given the way the team's set up and the, the kind of reliance on attacking fullbacks, you just well putting a chair in there in John Flanagan. Um, he's not he's <laughs> not an attacking fullback. He's never going to be an attacking fullback. He's decent enough defensively. Um, he's he reads the game sometimes well. Sometimes <laughs> he, he has absolute brain farts. But now, yeah, I post would have been the obvious, obvious one for me. There's been a lot of hype over Nathan Patterson and I the kid's got a massive future ahead of him. Looks really, really talented young player. But it's a big risk to throw such a young player into games, especially after the Hearts game. Yeah. Where there's so much. Yeah, um, I think I don't think there was any chance that he was gonna play at Hearts. No, neither did I. Uh, I, I thought know. it would also be a token gesture if he was on the bench because no. it's not the sort of game that I I, th I do think he looks really good and People are excited by the fact that he can get forward, whip balls in, and that's exactly what we want because people have been used to seeing Tav do that for the last four or five years, whatever. But a lot of that's also based on playing against the team at the bottom of the League One, though. That's yeah. And as I say, like you look at the Stranraer game, and that's a lot of people's only kind of sighting. Yeah. Patterson, George Edmondson played well in that game. Why is, why is there no demands that he replaces Nico Katic? Uh, what's, what's different? Yeah, well, obviously, if you're a centre-back in that game, you're not getting tested like you would at the weekend, which is the same, yeah, for Flan or for Patterson going the other way. I think it is, at this stage, for a guy who's playing Colts football and stuff, and, uh, you know, it's supposed to be a good grounding, but the whole idea, isn't it, that Rangers' model so far in recent years has been that guys will come up to a certain point then go on loan yeah, with a view yeah. to coming in because they'll get senior experience whereas he's bypassing that and people are asking that he goes straight into the starting 11 which I think I, I certainly think say for the St Mirren game he actually probably could have played and done a similar role but the whole idea of playing Flanagan was the fact that he hadn't got minutes yeah, yeah, it was so just they a case will play game, him yeah. because he's going to play against Hearts but uh, that's something that I think most nearly all Rangers fans will now be agreed on that it doesn't actually make any sense if Flanagan is playing or has been picked for any of these games based on the fact that he, he does not... He completely looks opposed to the style that Rangers are trying to play. So I think... My thing is that I didn't really know much about Matt Polster. Obviously, you follow a lot more of the US stuff than I do, so have more of an idea of him. I didn't, and I think most fans hadn't a clue what he was going to bring to the table. But w like, I think I, s I saw him play ninety minutes against St Joseph's at the start of the yep. year. But that's the same thing; it's another yeah, it's opposition. Nice. But what he brought when he came on makes it mind blowing that he wasn't actually playing ahead of Flanagan because he is a guy who is sort of in the Tav mold. You could see a couple of early crosses he put in, the willingness to link up with guys on the right hand side that. John Flanagan is simply not capable of doing. No, no, so why not. why is he getting picked? Why was he getting picked before then? I think it's just the manager going kind of with what he knows. Uh, I've seen stuff online for folks know, but it's, it's because he's a manager's pal. That's a load of bollocks. It, it is, it's, it's a load of bollocks. The manager isn't going to pick a player. Uh, look how vital these games are. Yeah. This, this is... Gerard going for what would be his first league title in his career. Not just as a player or as a manager, yeah. it would be his first league title. And do you really think that he's going to jeopardise that? Be going, oh, well, I know this guy for Liverpool, he's shite, but come on, he's my pal, <laughs> so we'll give him a game anyway. It's, it's madness. Um, but it's someone that Gerard's at least got a certain level of trust in. 
which rightly or wrongly, that's that happens all across football. Yeah. Walter Smith done it. Alex McLeish done it. Warburton done it. Cashinia done it. The next manager will probably Aye. do it. It's just football. Man, Darren Fletcher at United. That, like, Every Champions League game. Aye. For, yeah, now, rolls nobody's going to tell me he was the best midfield player in the world. Yeah. But he was someone that Alex Ferguson trusted immensely to do the job that he wanted him to do. And that's uh, what Flanagan's maybe not quite on that same level. <laughs> <laughs> but not quite. He's someone that Gerard trusts. Um, maybe less now after after yesterday. Um, but that that's the question going into it. To me, then, I see this is retrospectively looking up stats. So when he signed in the first place, I thought, you know, you're bringing him in for free, that's fine. The guy's had serious injury problems, like how will he go after that? But I think, and people were saying that he was given harsh treatment last season because when he was playing, he was playing at left back and, you know, he's right-footed player and all that. But for me, I don't understand how it's not coming through clearly in training that when he gets the ball, he looks forward, ops against it, looks sideways... If there's not an option sideways, he just gives it backwards. And and it just is totally against what we're trying to do when Tav's in the team or what we're trying to do on the other side with Barisic. So he's played four, he's played 39 games for Rangers and has one assist in 39 games mm-hmm. playing at right back in a team who like to push mm-hmm. the forwards forward. Or, sorry, half of those games at least will have been at left back. But, but I, it's just incredible that that... When, you, when, when, you see he, what, when, he, when he was at left back... Did we not have the exact same problem down the left? Yeah. Whereas you had a, a, a full back who wasn't going beyond the, the kind of wide attacker that wasn't kind of giving that extra width and it wasn't creating problems defensively for the other side. Yeah. So it's, it's just the same problem now mirrored. Um, but again, I just, like, if he starts against Ross County, like, Gerard's <laughs> God. If they, I think there'll be complete uproar. I think that's the thing. No, before the game, as someone you know looking in from the outside, I'm thinking that Patterson isn't going to play, so he will play Flanagan, and that's the lesser two evils. Just because you don't want to break the young lad, like going in to that sort of atmosphere, whatever, and pressure straight up. But I like that's the thing. I didn't know anything about Matt Polster, but what he showed in half an hour, like it's not as if he's just come to the club. He's been there for no, a year. It's a year now, yeah. So what he showed in that half an hour there surely means that going forward, he's a guy who mm-hmm. will I, be absolutely. a shoe in for these games at right back. I mean, I, I think I've said long enough that I'd like to see Matt get a chance here anyway, and hopefully this is going to be it for it. He's, I mean, he's clearly an athletic, an athletic player. He's an intelligent player. He's Certainly quite happy to get forward, and he's, he's shown that in other games that he's played as well. That he is, he's quite happy to bomb down that right wing and try and yeah. try and get involved in the attack. And it's it's what Rangers need. It's without to have there, you need to have somebody that's, that's happy to get forward. So we're hoping that I think Jared said before I the Hearts game has that to. that uh, Tav is. You know, he's back in the gym, he's on the bike and he's looking like he might break into a jog at some point. So we're hoping maybe in the fortnight, something yeah, like fingers that. Fingers crossed. He might be back. So this is maybe short term for the next couple of games or something like that. But we're thinking, after so much debate uh, between Flanagan, be, Patterson and Poster. It's got to be Poster on Wednesday for me. Um, it's got to be Poster. Nathan Patterson's time will come. Absolutely, it's going to come. Um, and I've seen a fair bit in with the Colts side and what have you. And I've no doubt that he's got everything that he needs to to be the long-term replacement for Tavernier. But I'd rather wait and get a good Nathan Parson for three, four, five, six years than get a good Nathan Parson for three, four, five games. And then, again, the pressure gets to him. Uh, and he's another one of these young boys who had it all at his feet and it just didn't work out for. 